Hello! If you haven't been playing Fly for a long while, this will be the perfect guide for you. Today, I'll be showing you where you can farm Pena fast and efficient depending on your equipment. I won't be giving any gear requirement, but I do recommend that you are having a set that can ensure you a one hit or two hit kill on the enemies. Expect for the endgame content. Keep in mind that any of the AoE classes like the Arcanist for example will be more efficient on the farm compared to any single target class of any kind. If you missed out on the previous guides make sure to check out my channel as well as my Twitch channel for various content. But let's dive right into the world of Matrigal. Now the scenery is up. The earliest point to farm money would be Tower B2 because it has a low gear requirement. Try and focus onto the central part of the room where the Abraxas and the Gullas are. Circle around this part of the floor in order to make the enemies respawn at a steady rate. Now this location is good for a starter, but the Pena per hour ratio will gradually lead you to make a transition after being fully geared up, thanks to a premium ticket. And this next location is Azria. This area benefits from a medium Pena per hour ratio, but is overall better than Tower B2 because of the enemies populating the map. Preferably you will want to go first for the Mammoth because they possess the highest spawn density in Asria while dropping high level items. One can find these while heading to the south of Asria. Though keep in mind that it is possible that another player is already camping the spot and you will want to look for a fallback plan which will lead you to consider the next relevant enemies of the area, the Ghosts of the Forgotten King, found in the north of Asria. These are less densely populating the area, but they drop high level items which can contribute to a steady source of income. Once you made enough money to gear yourself up from Asria, let's transition into the next area, which is Tresseia. It benefits from a high penny per hour ratio. Following the same scenario as in Asria, Tresseia consists in finding the Black Web Shades, known for having the highest spawn density of the game located within the middle right island according to our map. This is the best farming spot before you going to Cascada. But if this spot is already occupied by another player, I have an alternative for you. The Sakais, located to the bottom left island of the map. They are slightly less efficient than the Mammoth in terms of spawn rate, but they do drop higher level items than the Mammoth and even more frequently at that. When satisfied with our money making progress, let's move on to Dark Tresseia. This location is no different from the regular Tresseia, other than being a darker version of it, especially when it comes to its map. Another difference to point out is that the monsters are higher level and stronger. The equivalent of the Black Web Shades are called the Dark Usagi Yari while the doppelganger for the Sakais are named Dark Guardian Terrapins. This area alongside Tresseria Normal is one of the best locations for any non-endgame player to farm for money and resources in order to reach the endgame potential of the whole process. Which means that the Black Web Shades and or the Dark Usagi Yaris, depending on your gear, will be the top priority for a good while until you do reach the endgame content, solely based on the fact that another currency will appear along the process and will make you logically go forward this next and last location. Welcome to the mighty full realm of Cascada. This is the endgame content. This place worth is the experience point gained for your character the money coming along to help yourself gear up even better and also to benefit from its new currency unlocked at this stage, the angel coins. Now, if you will allow me to give you my personal opinion upon this part of the process, Cascada is worth farming actively when you start 3-hitting any of the monsters of the area, excluding the monstrous type of kind of enemy. Not only you'll be making the Pena per hour ratio being relevant while still enhancing your gearing process, but it will also give you a good stand upon the angel coins and levels. 
In order to make your farming experience better and more instinctive, I recommend you to go explore Cascada alone first, in order to find THE spot that you will consider worth your time investment, while testing the penny per hour ratio out. Though, do keep in mind, the better you're geared, the more money you'll make out of Cascada. And with that, I covered all spots that are worth farming. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please leave a like. If it did not help, please dislike the video. For future content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment on what I should cover next. Happy farming and see you in Matrigal.